Hi, good morning, Central Valley colleagues. Buenos dias. It's time to get started. Uh, welcome to today's event, uh, Understanding Youth Suicide and Effective Prevention, Intervention, and Postvention Strategies. Given the urgency of the topic uh, and the historical moment that we're living in, we really want to start by acknowledging your courage, your compassion, and commitment today uh, by, by participating and joining us. Um, we also want to extend our appreciation to the members of the Fresno Cares Coalition, many of whom are with us today, who've really been at the forefront of helping to reduce suicide for all people living in Fresno and in this region. Um, the event is especially designed for those of you who have, uh, who live and work in the Central Valley. It is uh, the fourth event in a series for educators and health, mental health, and social services practitioners to gain knowledge, skills, and the resources to support the health and the well being of children and youth in this region. Today's event is hosted by the California School Based Health Alliance and the Regional Educational Laboratory West, or RAL West at West Ed. It is also uh, partially supported by Kaiser Permanente of Northern California Community Benefits Program. We had initially planned uh, this event for last October, but of course, COVID. Um, some of you may have attended the past in-person events in this series, and for others, this may be your first time. Either way, it's a new format, and we're really glad that you're joining us here today. This, this event uh, and today is really focused on preventing and responding to youth suicide. Since the pandemic upended life and schooling as we know it, uh, youth suicide and factors that contribute to it, like isolation, depression, despair. All these have really increased uh, throughout the Central Valley and across the country. We're really looking forward to learning together about prevention, intervention, and postvention strategies that work to keep our children and youth supported. I want to take a minute to introduce myself. Um, my name is Sergio Morales, and I'm excited to serve as your MC today. Um, in my day job, I'm the Associate Vice President of Programs for Essential Access Health. And in my role today, I'm the President of the Board of Directors for the California School-Based Health Alliance. Uh, I've personally dedicated my career to advocating for healthcare access and equity for all. And like you, much of my work is focused on building systems for children, youth, and our families to thrive. Um, in terms of the School-Based Health Alliance, uh, for those of you that may not be as familiar with us, uh, CSHA um, is known as a statewide nonprofit dedicated to improving the health and academic outcomes of children and youth by advancing health services in our schools. Um, some of you may know our work through the Central Valley School-Based Health Coalition, which we've led for the, plus, for the past 10 plus years, and know that many of you who participate um, in the coalition activities are with us today. So nice to see you all again in a virtual environment. Uh, RAL West Ed is one of our partners. Um, it's one of 10 regional labs in the country funded by the U.S. Department of Education's Institute of Education Sciences with the goal of promoting the use of data and research evidence to inform education policy and practice. Its work in the Central Valley builds upon the notion that healthy students are more prepared to learn and succeed in school and life. And it has worked with us and many of you all to strengthen collaboration across sectors to, pre to improve outcomes for children and youth. Today's goals um, we, will, we will be focusing on hearing about research on the causes, the consequences, and rates of youth suicide, um, learn uh, practical evidence-based strategies for youth suicide prevention, intervention, and postvention, and really be introduced to a number of, health, of helpful Central Valley and state resources. 
Uh, we have an exciting agenda planned for you today. Um, we have two plenary sessions to kick off the day. Uh, first will be uh, with Dr. Cedric Goldman Meller, who will help us understand the research on youth suicide. And then later we'll also be joined by Stan Collins, who will share part one of his two part presentation on prevention, intervention and postvention. You'll also hear from um, leaders uh, throughout the state, from local youth doing really amazing peer-based work to reduce mental health stigma, and then from regional leaders such as Fresno Cares. Um, and then the day will wrap up with part two of Stan Collins' session. Um, and we've also built in a fun brain break. So stay tuned for more details on that. Um, everyone should receive the link to our agenda, which includes uh, links to each session, although most of our uh, convening today will be in this main uh, Zoom room. And, um, and then later for breakout sessions, you'll have some options, which will guide you through that as well. Uh, there are built-in breaks, so, uh, but of course, you know, it's important for you to take care of yourself and come in and, and go as you need. Um, if you leave a session, you can always click back into it by using the same links that are on the agenda. Um, and that's the link here that you see on your, on your screen. Uh, we've also have call-in information for those of you who may not uh, be able to access Zoom or on the go multitasking. And uh, just to answer questions that are commonly asked, Yes, we're recording the presentation and we'll be sending this, the recording and the slides to everyone who's registered. In addition, uh, CSHA or the California School-Based Health Alliance um, as one of the hosts of this will also include uh, the slides uh, and information on our website. We'll be following up with an email uh, from today's uh, event. Also uh, just a couple other uh, Zoom helpful tips. As you see here, we list the number as well as the code to call in. Um, I also want to let you know that although your camera and mics are turned off, we definitely want to hear from you and strongly encouraging you right now to enter questions, comments, feedback, feelings. Uh, I agree. I'm loving it um, into our chat feature, which is uh, closely monitored by uh, members of our team and will be addressed in chat individually or some of those messages may be cycled up to me to address the group. Now, uh, I want us to really get started. And I'm really excited to introduce uh, uh, Monica Nep Nepomuceno, who is an education program consultant at the California Department of Education, uh, where she oversees uh, mental health initiatives and represents the voice of K through 12 students on uh, statewide committees. She's gonna take a few minutes to share how the state supports local efforts to prevent youth suicide. Uh, welcome, Monica. Muchas gracias, Sergio. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. So good morning and happy Thursday to you all. It's truly an honor for me to have been invited today to briefly share the work of uh, the California Department of Education on suicide prevention and mental health. But before I do that, I really wanted to pause for a, a moment and, and, and acknowledge you know, where we are um, what what we've been through in our professional and our personal spaces, right? We've all been through so much um, this year. And I know you've heard this over and over again, and you'll probably continue to hear it um, more, but it's the truth. Um, and I just want to take a, a moment and pause and, and, and really ask you, have we been able to step back and absorb and, and and appreciate our situation as as well as um, you know the hardships and, and our perseverance right um, this is really an important step when we acknowledge this um, because it's it's an important step really in the process of life the reflection and acknowledgement of what we've been through embracing not only the experience but also our perseverance and, and the tenacity to keep going and this isn't only an important step for us personally, but it's also a great way to model resilience and 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 you know the the verve and the 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 
grit to keep going, being real with our students about our feelings, our needs, and even letting them know that we too, you know, need help and that we can ask for it when, when we feel that we need it. It shows them how to handle these difficult situations. And I guess what I'm saying is, you know, it, it's, it's a risk because we are when we do this, we're being a little bit vulnerable, but we have to acknowledge, right, this, this vulnerability so that we can teach them um, how to build their skills and, and build their toolbox. So, well, we do acknowledge that this has been a challenging time for all, um, for students and families. Uh, we know that they're struggling and that they need support. Um, we, we also know that, you know, students, we're losing students. Um, and this is a hard thing to grasp, right? We know that uh, there's been some youth suicides that have been highlighted and, and um, you know, sadly, some people are using those deaths to fit their own narratives to open the schools. And it, it doesn't reflect necessarily what was going on before the pandemic and that suicides and mental health issues were quite prevalent even before we had to, to close the schools. Um, but with that, I, I just want to give people a big message of, of hope and inspiration, right, to acknowledge and, and foster that resilience in our incredible students and to also acknowledge that it's a collective responsibility to continue to build that flexibility so that they can face adversaries, adverse, adversities in their lifetime. Um, we, we do recognize that student mental health is at stake, but we also know that there are so many organizations and professionals who've created wonderful and free resources to help not only dur during distance learning and during COVID, but also beyond, right? So with this in mind, I'm going to share some of the resources that we have at the CDE. And I'll start by um, sharing a little bit about the statewide suicide postvention response team. This is a newly formed team that stems from the uh, student mental health policy work groups uh, suicide prevention committee. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, it's staggered. Um, and so this group was really uh, convened to help LEAs build their capacity and connect them to their local resources, their county office of education, county behavioral health department, and also community mental health and suicide prevention and postvention resources. We acknowledge that when an LEA experiences a suicide, um, that many are not prepared. And so we wanna be able to help guide them through this journey so that they are able to uh, not only handle the, the situation at hand, but also to in, improve their protocols and procedures. Um, so all of these, all of these we're going to list um, in the chat box, all of the links to all of these things, all the resources. Um, Monica, thank you. If we could just list those in the chat. Oh, okay. And then, Absolutely. Uh, we'll be able to make sure, share them with our participants, and we'll also be able to uh, include it in the email when we email it out to everybody. Okay, perfect. Is that my sign to cut it? We want to say thanks, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I just want to thank you for all of your work that you're doing, and please know that the CDE is a partner in all of this work, and reach out if you need any support. Awesome. Gracias, Monica. Appreciate your, your resources and your, and your support today. Um, 